Welcome to room nine, the region's largest classroom. I am Mrs. Wright and I am a teacher at Monroe Elementary in St. Charles. Today I will be teaching a reading lesson meant for second graders, but as always, everyone, kids, adults, grandparents, aunts, uncles, babies, everybody is welcome to learn with us. Excuse me. Getting my brain ready. Again, another day in a row. Um, so you know what to do by now, unless this is your first time watching um, with Mrs. Wright, then welcome. I'm super happy that you are here. We like to get our brains and our bodies ready to learn. And we do that by picking spots where we can focus. So let me give you an example right now. I am in a spot that my brain can focus in. I don't have a lot of distractions except for my dog Molly. Um, I have a window right here, but I can't really see out of it just because the way that I'm sitting. Um, I have my water to help my brain focus um, because it's back to school time, so my brain feels crazy. Um, and my body, I'm sitting up and um, I have a backrest if I need one. Um, I might need to do a little stretching throughout. Let's all stretch for a second. Oh, yes. Get your body ready to learn. Oh, man. Okay. And you're in a spot where you can focus. That's the best feeling ever when your body is ready to learn and your brain is ready to learn at the same time. You feel like you can conquer the world. So that's what we are going to do during this lesson. We are going to conquer the world. Um, if you do not have something to write on and something to write with, go ahead and grab it. Hopefully we get to the writing part. Sometimes I talk about the book a little too much and we don't get there. Um, so this week, we have been focusing a lot on characters. And um, if you have watched any of the episodes, you have heard me say that I love teaching about characters. And I love teaching all the reading skills through Read Aloud. I fully believe you can teach any skill through Read Aloud. Um, and just watching other people think and having a conversation so we might not be able to talk through the TV, but we can, okay? So I might ask you questions. I can't necessarily hear your response, but I usually have a pretty good idea what I think your response might be because I work with some awesome kids every day who say the most amazing things, and I know you're amazing too. So I want you, when I am asking those questions, I wanna hear you thinking, and if you're in the room with someone, you can talk through with them. Sometimes I talk through things with my dog, Molly, um, if she feels like making an appearance, which I don't see her right now. Uh, Molly, come here! Um, so just make sure that your brain is on and focused and really ready to study characters because that is what we are focused on doing in this video. So I will be able to use context clues to understand unknown words, which we're going to go through the vocabulary words at the beginning. Um, and we'll talk about them sometimes throughout the book, but our biggest focus today is I will be able to analyze a character's feelings, words, and actions. And this chart over here is um, a diff an example of the different ways that we analyze characters. So we can learn about our characters by studying their actions, the things that they do in the book, their feelings. Um, so they might say like, I feel mad. I felt happy, those kinds of things. Um, their words, the things that they say in the book, whether it be to themselves, 
just out loud or to other characters, we can study how they react to not only just the problems, but really any event. We can study how they react to something good, something bad, something scary, and we'll learn about them. And we can study how they interact, how they have conversations, how they have actions with other characters to learn about them. So you can study characters in the same way that you can study people, okay? So if you've ever learned about someone um, by talking to them, that's interacting with the character, right? So watch how, read and watch how the characters interact with each other and you'll learn, okay? So we are going um, to get started with some vocabulary words. The book we are reading today is being read with permission from Peachtree Publishing Company Incorporated. Thanks, Peachtree. Um, and this book is The House on Dirty Third Street. Hmm, interesting. And these are some of the words that you will come across in this book. So we have afford. That means being able to buy something. Um, or being able um, to do something. Run down. Run down means something is not kept in the best condition. So this back door we have right here, um, it's safe, but it's not pretty, so it's a little run down looking. Filthy, filthy is another word for dirty, and it usually means extremely dirty. Shivers, right, shivers. Have you ever gotten the shivers before? It's like the shakes, but it just like goes down your body when you don't expect it, the shivers. You can get them when you're cold, maybe when you're scared. Obvious, obvious means um, that it should be easily known or already known about. Grouchy, crabby, another word for crabby. And shutters, shutters are on um, your house sometimes. And a long time ago, before there were like actual glass windows, shutters were used in windows. Um, and now shutters are more just like decoration next to the windows. So, um, but shutters can open and close, okay? So, we are going to get started reading. I'm really excited for this book and I want you to pay very close attention to something, okay? As we read this book, something happens with this character. And I want to see, I don't want to say it, because I want to see if you notice it. And that's what we're going to write about at the end. So, really be thinking, what is happening? And it's something to do with the pictures. So, pay really close attention to the pictures. Okay? Okay. So, The House on Dirty Third Street by Joe S. Kittinger. I'm going to read the blurb. When I first saw the house on 30, 33rd Street, I couldn't believe it. Mom had said starting over would be <clears throat> an adventure. So I imagined a tropical island with palm trees and buried treasure. Not this. Joe S. Kittinger's powerful story of revitalizing a community and believing in a dream is a best-selling book. The House on Dirty Third Street. Mom said starting over would be an, an adventure. So I imagined a tropical island with palm trees and buried treasure. Not this. I can already tell she has a good imagination if she was thinking palm trees, buried treasure. All the houses on 33rd Street were old and run down. So remember, that means not like taken care of very well. But the one with the for sale sign 
was the worst. I'd call the whole place Dirty Third Street. It's perfect, said Mom. It doesn't look perfect to me, I said. It's perfect, she said, because we can afford it. Try looking at it through eyes of faith, said Mom. I squinted and tilted my head. It still looks horrible to me. What do the words, the feelings that she's expressing and the actions tell you about this little girl? Yeah, she's disappointed and she is not happy with this situation because it's not what she thought it was gonna be. Soon, the house on Dirty Third Street was ours. But before we could start moving things in, we had to move trash out. So she's working hard, and there's her mom working hard as well. A neighbor watched from her front yard. Hi there, mom called out to her. I've hired a man to take a load to the dump. Is there anything you'd like to add to our trash pile? I don't know. The woman sounded like she hadn't trusted anyone in years. Hmm, hadn't trusted anyone in years. So it doesn't sound like maybe there was great people living around her. Maybe people that she had trusted have done things to break her trust. The mom and the daughter are being friendly. You can tell because the mom said her words, that's your evidence that she could add trash to their dump pile. <clears throat> Before long, mom and I were wrestling an old sofa from Mrs. Huddle's porch to the curb. By the end of the day, word had spread. The pile in front of our house became a mountain. Hmm. So on this page, Mrs. Huddle was unsure of them. They didn't even know her name. And now over here, they knew her name and they were helping move the sofa or the couch from her porch to the trash. So what does Mrs. Huddle's words and actions, the interactions with other characters, tell you about the mom and the little girl? Yeah, that they seem pretty trustworthy. If right away Mrs. Huddle was apprehensive to talk to them and then she did, that they must seem like friendly, um, trustworthy people. The bathroom was so filthy, it made shivers run down my back. It will look and smell better when it's clean, Mom told me. So all day Saturday, we swept and scrubbed. I was dog tired and grouchy. What do you think that means? I was dog tired and grouchy. Yeah, so dog tired means like you are just exhausted, right? Dogs get tired because they usually run and play all day. So if you're dog tired, you are tired from working all day. Clearing away the trash and dirt just made it obvious how ugly the place truly was. This house will never look good, I mumbled. So she's still not really happy. Uh-oh. You may be right, said Mom. She sank to the floor in the corner. What was I thinking? I slumped down beside her and leaned my head against her shoulder. Remind me, I said, how did you see it? Hmm, interesting. 
Think about what's happening here. I'm going to reread this. You may be right, said Mom. She sank to the floor in the corner. What was I thinking? I slumped down beside her and leaned my head against her shoulder. Remind me, I said. How did you see it? So how is she reacting to this problem? Sorry. Yes, you're right. The little girl has is now trying to be the one that's positive for her mom because her mom is feeling really upset about this house and the situation that they're in. So that shows me how much this little girl loves her mom because she doesn't want to see her mom sad like this. I saw a pretty white house with blue shutters, she said. There were flowers on the porch. The windows sparkled and curtains danced in the breeze. The kitchen was full of friends and I smelled cookies hot from the oven. Mom's eyes got dreamy looking. Then she shook her head. I miss our old neighborhood, she said, and my friends from church. We can make new friends. I stood up and dusted myself off. I saw a church a few blocks away. Let's go in the morning. So really loves her mom. After breakfast, we walked to the church. In Sunday school, the teacher asked if anyone had prayer, requ prayer requests. We just moved here and our house needs a lot of work. I said, I don't want mom to cry anymore. Please pray that she can still see the house with eyes of faith and that I somehow can see it that way too. So what does this situation tell us about the little girl? She's kind of changed, hasn't she? She was being really negative about her house when her mom was being really positive. And now her mom is being really positive, negative about the house and she's being really positive. She's even asking for help. She really loves her mom. These actions. We're studying the actions and the words and the interactions. You're doing such a good job. Not long after we got home, I heard a knock at the door. Good afternoon, ma'am, a man said when mom opened the door. At church this morning, I heard you could use some help around here. Mom was showing him the broken bricks on the porch when Mrs. Huddle walked across the street. These might cheer things up, she said. Once upon a time, my flowers used to bloom on near about every porch in this neighborhood. So Mrs. Huddle's back. And now this time, she's helping them. So again, this is an interaction with other characters. And it tells me that the girl and the mom are good people because now this lady is coming back to help them. Mrs. Huddle started transplanting the flowers into an old cement planter in the yard. A few minutes later, a car pulled up. Next thing I knew, a whole family was heading our way including my Sunday school teacher and a girl my age. Welcome to the neighborhood, my teacher said. My husband's a great handyman. The man took one look at the peeling paint and then pulled out a cell phone. Let me get a few more folks over here, he said. By the next weekend, our house looked like an anthill. Men on the roof hammered shingles. My new friends and I scraped peeling paint. A lady fixed loose bricks on the porch. Another neighbor worked on the plumbing. The sun settled behind our house and the workers took a break. I opened the door and the smell of cookies hot from the oven, made my mouth water. Finally, I could see it, our place, as mom had through eyes of faith. 
we found our perfect home. And somehow I knew that I wouldn't call it Dirty Third Street anymore. So good, right? So good. I'm really wondering if you noticed what I noticed. How did this little girl change throughout the story? How did she change? How did she change? In fact, you know what? That's what I want you to write about. How did she change? So the little girl changed. And I want you to just write it out without me saying anything, giving my opinions. I want you to write about how she changed. The little girl changed. Just writing it out. Yeah, so how did she change? Anybody want to share theirs? Yeah, I agree. So this little girl changed because at first she was not happy about this house, right? And she didn't want to stay there. But then she saw how her mom was so upset about the house and it really happened in the bathroom. The bathroom, this is where things really changed for the characters, is when she saw her mom sad and down. That's truly when she changed, right? So that tells me that this little girl, her mom is so important to her. Do you agree? Yeah, her mom's happiness and her mom's feelings mean a lot to her. And she became the one that was being more positive and she was the one who, at Sunday school, um, asked for help and then all these people came to their house and helped them get their house in the shape that they needed to. They could have probably done some of the work with just the two of them, but most of the work took place with these people and their help. The roof, they probably couldn't have done. Those people did it for them. The painting, they probably could have done, but all of this was done because people cared about others, right? And I want you to notice, did you notice anything about the pictures? How did this book's pictures start out? There's the beginning picture. And there's the end. And I'm just gonna flip through them really quickly. And you'll notice when the girl was being really negative, majority of the pictures were in black and white. And as she had to become more positive, and as the story went on, the pictures started to grow in color. So I think the pictures symbolize the little girl changing and asking for help and her mom being happier. And by the end of it, the pictures are in full color because they're feeling happier about where they are. And the little girl's changed to not want it to be dirty third street anymore. 
I just think that's a really, really beautiful way of representing how a character changes. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that book as much as I did. Um, I am enjoying studying these characters with you and I will see you back here tomorrow. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.